You've reached the end of this highway, still under construction. The ghosts are very mad right now. Mm -hmm. And we are at the point where pe people were trying to guess where the first remake game would end. And this was Zombie one of the Zombie President Shinra, you gotta kill him uh, again. Yeah. This was basically where a lot of people thought it might end for the first game. It's a, uh, in the original game, this point here is a pretty, like, logical and plot-wise, just for, like, the first arc of the game's story, I guess, but it's not yeah. quite an ending for a full game. So let's see you how they- the president. That seems like an ending. <laughs> Killing the president is usually the end of a story. Yeah, so let's see what they do with this. John Wilkes Booth, chapter two. <laughs> Nobody wrote that. I'm starting to think he's real. Hmm. Okay, asshole, let's... Don't. Barrett's so upset about the kill steal. <laughs> yeah. It was mine, asshole. And you. You're wrong. Those who look with clouded eyes see nothing but shadows. Everything about you is wrong. All born are bound to her. Should this world be unmade, so too shall her children. The world won't end today. For you. You will. Why do you care? <laughs> Why do all of you care about this guy? You just met him. Mm -hmm. Are you all that upset at him knocking Cloud off a bridge? Listen. When people bring up something, it's like, hey, I don't know how newcomers to this game could play this and understand it. Just I still think newcomers can understand those things, but you know how there was that time the cat appeared and people are like, who the fuck is that cat? There's one thing with the final section of this game that's like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> this is something clearly meant to fuck with people who have played the original game. Goth Cloud. That's right, Goth Cloud. Wait, no, two pauldrons. That's a current soldier. Oh, wait, maybe Jock Cloud? We drag our asses all this way. This is the welcome we get. Is that Quentin Flynn doing a weird voice? <laughs> Thankfully, it is not Quentin Flynn. Oh, that's good. No Quentin Flynn in this. Boy, oh boy. The price of freedom is steep. Are you sure it's not Quentin Flynn under a pseudonym <laughs> doing a weird voice? I'm pretty sure. All those accusations came out like, mm, I'm changing my name for work purposes. Mm. Embrace your dreams. And whatever happens, protect your honor. As a soldier! Come and get it! Just go off the side of the highway and go home. <laughs> Just go home. Just push Sephiroth off the side. I'm waiting, Cloud. Just do a 180. Get back <laughs> on the, the cars, they still work. Take a different ramp. This is the point of no return. People keep saying that. <laughs> that menus imply it? Now, 
if Sephiroth had done that while standing in her little magic circle, he would have opened two portals. Oh man, don't know what the fuck happens with that. Destiny's crossroads. Then why did you stop me? I'm not really sure. What will we find on the other side? Disc two. <gasps> Freedom. Boundless, terrifying freedom. Like a great, never-ending sky. What you heard just now were the voices of the planet. This is Barrett's best day ever. <laughs> he heard the voice of the planet. President Shin was dead. Who returned? They're howling in pain. Because of him, Sephiroth. They, their words, they don't reach him. All these moments and memories, precious and fleeting. They're like rain rolling off his back. And when they're gone, he won't cry or shout or anything. If you don't stop and smell the roses, <laughs> you will turn evil. He'd tell you that he only cares about the planet. That he'd do everything in his power to protect and preserve it. But this isn't the way it's supposed to be. There's no greater threat to the planet than him. Sephiroth has to be stopped. He has to be. And that's why... I'm asking you to help me. I know that together we can do this. But if we do... We'll be changing more than fate itself. If we succeed, if we win, we'll be changing ourselves. I guess... Maybe... That's why I hesitated. They go through the portal and they come out of like eight polygons. <laughs> yeah, they got the Popeye arms now. You said it yourself. He has to be stopped. And frankly, I've heard enough howling for a lifetime. Don't say that in front of Red. Mm -hmm. The barrier of whispers. Barrier of whispers. So, yeah, you can actually walk backwards a little bit where there is a chair and a vending machine. <laughs> to, to stock up and all that. Okay, so I've got a lot of stuff to say about everything that happens in this final <laughs> bit of the game. Uh -huh. um, I'm gonna go get ice cream. You, you do this one on your own. I'll, I'll see it in a few weeks on the channel. Uh -huh. um, as, as for builds for everybody, I'm making them, everybody, just kind of... The, the best version of like their standard build, which is Barrett's a tank, Cloud's in the middle, mm -hmm, Tifa punches mm -hmm. real hard or is fast, Tifa's really good at magic. I'm basically just doing that for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, Tifa's really good at magic, correct, yes. Oh, yep. Yeah. Cloud's also getting the mythical amulet just so that he has even stronger summons. Uh, the mm -hmm. chain bangle he has that we picked up earlier is one of the best pieces of equipment in the game. There's only one of them in the game. You can't get any more than that. Um, because we have more than three people now and we're going to be switching between different members, Cloud has healing material on him so that no matter what, we at least have one magic healer. Right. Also, Barrett's going to be wearing the Iron Maiden, so no materia slots there, but his defense is a really close to being at 200 points. Like, he is so he beefy. He calls the Iron Maiden the Metal Mama. <laughs> oh, I could hear that in his voice right now, even. Yeah, I can hear him can, saying Metal you? Mama. Yeah. Giving him some HP, HP up, so he's a little over 7,000 HP. 
pretty beefy. So, in the original game, when you get to this point, it's basically like, okay, end of the road, um, and Sephiroth, they, have, they haven't they have seen Sephiroth in the original game. They just know he's been here and is alive because you find mm. President Shinra after he's already been stabbed. Like, he's just sitting in his desk slumped over with the sword clean through him. And right. Cloud sees the sword and goes like, oh, fuck, that's Sephiroth, who in the original game, you've only heard his name said two or three times. You've never seen him. And at the end of this part of the original game, it's basically still like, we got to go after Sephiroth for less yeah, reasons yeah. than in this one, at least. So throughout this whole game, like, you know, of course, the plot has been aware of itself being a remake, you know, with the whispers and all of that. But Aerith brought up this idea of the whispers of the planet which is a thing from the original, because she can commune with the plant, she can hear the voices of souls and mm -hmm, stuff floating mm -hmm. around the live stream. Um, this That's time... how she told her mom that uh, her husband was dead. Yeah. Normal thing kids do, yeah. Uh-huh. Thank you, Cloud. Whatever happens, we'll be okay, as long as we stick together. This time, even though it's not explicitly said, it seems like Aerith, via the oh, voices of the planet, is kind be. of vaguely aware of the plot Didn't of the original game longer. itself as well. <laughs> like, not a fortune teller or anything, but she just gets, like, we weird path, feelings that back. things are supposed to happen certain ways. Kind of yeah, and you think back to uh, the, the missable Aerith thing. Yeah, uh, at nighttime at her place. There was like implications that she knew things that she didn't know how to say she knew. Question. Yeah. Will there be whispers on the other side? Ready? Never tried to challenge destiny. This could well be her last line of defense. It won't be easy. Let's go. When I first played this game, I thought they were going to walk into this void, the screen would go to white, and then it'd just be credits. <laughs> and I yeah. was really worried that was going to be the ending. <laughs> yeah! We just formed the Fight Sephiroth Club. Here we go. Mm -hmm. hmm. Wouldn't be the first time I spit in Destiny's eye. Wow, you hate streamers, huh? <laughs> Whether you don't see the scenes or you can't, doesn't change that she's always trying to hack it her way. They're a bad influence on Marlene. <laughs> yeah. Daddy's coming home real soon, honey. I'm gonna spit Destiny's eye, and then I'm gonna kill Dream. <laughs> about you, but looks normal to me. Over there. <sighs> I was kind of hoping it would be a world without whispers. I kind of like the idea of like this external force keeping the story on the rails for part one, mm -hmm. and then the rest of the game's remakes, things just wildly diverge. Right. Which is still possible. You could beat up the whispers, and then that... Mm-hmm. Finally, 
Finally, they bring back the pincer attacks from the original game. <laughs> They're just playing every uh, uh, distressed grunt noise <laughs> all at the same time for every character. Yeah. Yeah, Cloud has extra, we know. Mm -hmm. Hey, what up, Shinra? It's your boy Cloud coming in. Oh, never mind. Just spit towards the Shinra building and see if you hit it. <laughs> Drop a penny, see if it kills somebody down there. Oh, yeah! Even one Shinra soldier is good enough. Graphics card mascot. <laughs> Just imagine the high polygon babes you'll be able to render with this. <laughs> There's uh, some director's commentary from like an art book or something regarding this creature where they said, we originally wanted it to be 3,000 meters tall, but that was really hard, so we made him like 300. <laughs> mm -hmm. We wanted him to be 10 times as big. <laughs> well, then, like, what would you even have alongside four scale? There's yeah. nothing. It, it would be, <laughs> be meaningless. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like end of Eva, like that big. Yeah. But, but you don't have, like, uh, uh, the planet, you know? Yeah. You want to keep things on the scale with, you know, your, your, uh, your tanker ships and things like that. Yeah. So this is where Cloud's been saving his jump points. Hell yeah. This is why. an arbiter of fate than the others. We can beat them. All right, that's cool. These guys are cool. I like them. <laughs> Bring it on! Ghost robots. Ghost robots. Man, when I was playing this for the first time, I was, like, sitting on the fucking front half inch of my couch going like, What the fuck is happening? Uh, <laughs> but if we scan these guys, you've got Whisper Rubrum, an entity from a future timeline that is manifested in the present day, it fights with a sword to protect the future that gave shape to it. Hmm. Hmm. All of the whispers are immune to basically all uh, status effects except for uh, silence. They're color coded to whatever element that they absorb. They don't have any weaknesses mm -hmm. though. Uh, yeah, I like the look of these guys. Uh, so they can be silenced because a whisper is already so close to being it's, quiet. It's really close. Yeah. <laughs> just, just a little bit further. Uh, but yeah, these guys all have whatever they have the highest level magic of whatever element they are associated with, and you can silence them so that they are no longer able to cast magic. Um, so... Okay. <laughs> I don't know where to start! Fucking hell! I, I paused on these guys for a while because I knew I was going to have to say a bunch of shit. Um, yeah, okay, so we've got the Whisper Rubrum here uh, fighting with a sword. If we uh -huh. take a look at the to other... To protect the future that gave shape to it. Yep. Uh, if we take a look at the other whispers, this one fights barehanded, uh -huh. and the other one fights with guns. 
Uh, so okay. kind of seems uh-huh, like a, uh-huh, I see. Kind of seems like a, a mirror match, you know. Right, right. Some people, because this guy with the guns, he has two guns. Some people have thought, okay, this isn't meant to be like a mirror match between the original party, but rather these guys are homages or maybe plot related to the three villains from the sequel movie to the original game Advent Children in which they also fought with those weapons, but the guy with guns had two guns. And one of mm. these, I think this guy later on in a later phase, when he gets new moves, one of his moves is named after the guns that character had in the movie. I think it's just an homage, but some people are going real fucking crazy with these guys and thinking <laughs> it's tied in with the Abbott children. I, again, I think it's just a cute Easter egg for now. Maybe I'll be super wrong. Also, the Whisper Harbinger, the huge one, also in the fight, it's got a ton of mm. moves, has a 140,000 HP. Um, but yeah, the whispers appear whenever someone tries to alter Destiny's course, and they're just connected to all threads of time and space, shaped to the planet's fate. It's immune to everything. <laughs> you can actually hit it with magic, but, like, don't. <laughs> you can't do shit to this thing. Yeah, fighting all these guys. Uh, Whisper Rubrum yeah. is the easiest one to fight, I think, because Cloud is really good at parrying it or, you know, using counter stance on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the one with guns has a lot of attacks to make you flinch. Uh, the one that fights barehanded has a lot of lightning stuff that can stun you if you don't block it in time. You can pressure them just by hitting them really hard, but it's impossible to stagger them, even if you're using something uh, like Tifa's Focus Strike. Right, right. Pressuring them just makes them stop attacking for a little bit, and that's, that's all you can really get out of it. It's good, though. It's a good thing to do. Yeah. Correction. Oh, did I say something wrong? Is it a bad <laughs> thing to do? Just gonna send a lot of white out at you? Yeah. Come on, that ain't fair. Run. While the whispers don't really like do time travel, like rewindy just stuff, go. it would have been cool if like the big just one would just like make the fight rewind thirty seconds. Like you didn't do that. <laughs> that would have been a fun gimmick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're here because we're sick of this destiny shit. Mm-hmm. And also because Sephiroth is here, and Sephiroth, we are told, is very dangerous to all of our, our other goals. Don't yeah. Do it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there I know that there are people who have, you know, as we brought up before, uh, we're not a fan of Sephiroth appearing a bunch in the this part of the game, because mm -hmm. Like, yes, it is cool that somebody who is just mentioned briefly as, like, this legendary thing only two or three times and is clearly either dead or isn't an important figure anymore just suddenly appears and has killed the fucking president out of nowhere. Yeah. It's kind of a cool reveal, but when you get to the end of the this part of the game, the original, and it's just like, Cloud just goes, Sephiroth is live, he's really bad, and you have nothing else to work with, I feel yeah. that works for me less than if, as Cloud, you've been seeing Sephiroth appear, being just kind of vaguely menacing, having weird mm -hmm. flashbacks mm -hmm. to bad things Sephiroth may have done. And also, the Sephiroth reveal is, what, like 25 years ago? Yeah. Like, there's... As much as you want it to be, there's things you can't take back. Sephiroth hasn't just been a villain in the game. He's been an icon. He, he's been yeah. like a mascot for all of gaming. Yeah. For so much time. Like, even though Final Fantasy is one of many, many, many things that in some elements, or, you know, either aesthetically or certain things, was inspired by Berserk, Cloud and Sephiroth themselves are just as big, iconic, like, swordsman anime guys as Guts is now. 
Uh, I would say more so. Maybe even more. We gotta get out of here I mean, at, at least to like an international audience, like look at sales figures for Final Fantasy VII and all its permutations over the years compared to Berserk volumes. Yeah. I bet, especially in the US, I bet I know which one comes out on top. Yeah. So, and I know that there are also people who aren't a fan of the whispers element of the remake because there are people who just want a straight one-to-one remake and i i get that Mm -hmm. um but like what you said about sephiroth there are some things with the original that are so fucking well known even if you've never played it that if you're gonna do that remake maybe people who worked on the original might want to do it differently this time which is kind of what the whispers (laughs) are all fucking about Mm -hmm. so we're one-on-one with the rubrum here uh all three of these whispers have uh, a, a temper move that makes them power up Ooh. when they use it. New moves. Ah, uh, so they're made of chocolate. Mm. A crimson twist does sound like a raspberry flavored chocolate treat. Hmm. I want one. That'd be all right. I, could, I would like work. to eat a crimson twist, please. Yeah. On you. Bring it. Got a hole. He got there. Your Stay down, asshole. I got it. So if you do manage to actually kill a whisper, it gets staggered, doesn't die, and all damage you do to it gets transferred to the harbinger. Ooh, and also, this is cool. Damage caps are removed, so if Cloud hits this thing with Infinity's End, he does like 17,000 damage. 18,000. Makes his arm blow up and fall off. <laughs> Fuck you, Destiny. Did we do it? Hang on! Oh. Aerith! I've been here petting a dog. <laughs> I just see. The whispers are protecting a future where the dog becomes your dog husband. <laughs> a glimpse of tomorrow if we fail you today. So yeah, that that little vision there that they got, uh, mm-hmm. that is... Red 13 running free in, in a farm upstate. Uh, that is an event from the original Final Fantasy VII, but it's a recreation of that event that was done for the movie Advent Children. So a lot of these memories that are going to flash through their minds throughout this fight are from the movie. <laughs> Keep it together. Yes, it's my turn. Good job on Red for pressuring the, the whisper. Yeah. What a good guy. Love that Red. You don't mind if I'm gonna get the Yeah, 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 yeah. Take it out. Yeah, there's no way it could have been ten times larger. <laughs> yeah. What you would do- you even look at? <laughs> yeah. You'd have to do a God of War thing where you're fighting on its body or something. I don't know. <laughs> Which would be cool. That, yeah, that would, would be, be cool. That'd be cool, too, yeah. Shit. Whatever. Come on. Throughout the game, you know, Cloud has also been getting 
you know, he's been getting certain like PTSD style flashbacks, some, but some of them have been events yet to come. Uh, ever since he touched Aerith near the start of the game, before the whispers popped up, he's been getting some flashes of that, which I suppose are the same types of flashes Aerith may have been getting her life through her life as well. Right, right. Yeah. I want to see uh, an Aerith-inspired whisper that just sort of runs around and hides. <laughs> it's got, it has the same boots on. Yeah, and then it hits you with a lightning bolt for like 10,000 damage. <laughs> I'm looking at these blank pages, and some of them have writing on them. Hmm. Uh. Uh, them again! Least they can do is give us a little breather. I say we split up. Take them down at the same time. In that case, Ultra Big Boy is all mine. Big Boy. The Big Boy. The Big Boy. The Ultra Big yeah. Boy. <laughs> Bring it on, bitch. The Ultra Big Boy is a three-decker sandwich. Oh yeah. <laughs> Double time. Here goes. Now you don't have a Mr. Meaty to take all these blows. No. Oh. At least Aerith is a very good healer. Hey. Yeah. Who can block an explosion to the face? What do you think of this trick? I think you have it's a nice friend. I, I don't know what you're asking for with that. <laughs> Ooh. The ghost robots make a dragon. Hell yeah. That's very good. Let's do this. Right. We can do this together. So this is Whisper Hello. Bahamut. Bahamut is a recurring summon throughout the Final Fantasies, usually one of the more powerful ones. It's just a big dragon that shoots mouth lasers. Mm -hmm. uh, got this lovely <laughs> rainbow version. I can't wait for you to get all this data back to Chadley. And he's like, Mr. Cloud, you are making this shit up. What the fuck? <laughs> what, yeah, what the fuck is this one? I do not believe you, Mr. Cloud. Yeah, immune to all status effects. Uh, lots and lots of magic-based attacks, including Mega Flare, which is the name of the attack it usually does when you summon it in the various games throughout the series. I thought both of us were incapable of making jokes. It's why I liked you. Perhaps I was wrong. <laughs> I'll take care of them. So his basic attacks are, are physical, but so uh, you still kind of need to guard against both of those. Its umbral strike attack here is homing and unblockable. So even if you're trying to block that, you're just going to get juggled by it. That sounds bad. It's very oh, bad. You have that. That, that. that attack fucks me up a lot. Also, you can, it's pretty easy to tell when Bahamut like decides which party member he's going to attack. Whenever he does that, switch to somebody else because they're gonna get rocked no matter what. Yeah. The Bahama is absurdly aggressive and always attacking one of the three people you got, so. Uh, so Mega Flare, it charges up for a very brief amount of time. Like, I saw it instantly try to put a, a mana w wall on everybody and heal. It, it was too late. Mm -hmm. Mega Flare's gonna fuck me up. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> he he hit you with a cutscene. Yeah, but if you're able to hit it with some attacks right as it's starting to charge up, you'll pressure it. 
Yay. There you go. <laughs> Tifa isn't dead anymore. The best defense is a good offense, or so they say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keeping Tifa with a super fast build so she can just do that focus strike over and over. It's on you. I'll take care of them. <laughs> you better. It's not over yet. Because your friend can't. You can do it. My turn. Thankfully, Cloud can parry and counter stance a lot of Bahamut's uh, attacks still. <laughs> Tifa's parry dodge also lets her dodge some otherwise undodgeable stuff. Yeah. It's still hard to dodge all of the umbral strikes, though. It's possible, though. I like the element of Christmas music in this boss fight. <laughs> I'll take care of you. This is what's divisive about the the ending bit of the remake. There, there are people that are not a, a, a fan of the original game's plot as being a pre-written Destiny thing. Um, I think I'm cool with it. That, that this could change. I also think you're cool with it. <laughs> that, yeah, uh, I think this. My, my opinion on this could change. I guess depending on how the further games go, you know. Right, right. Uh, for, you know, changing destiny stuff like that. But Thanks for coming to help. this also just kind of feels like it could potentially just be an extension of we need to make remake the game. We think it's not quite possible to do the whole thing in one game. We need to fill out earlier parts, maybe with new stuff. What if that was a part of the plot, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <clears throat> it's also like, okay, we're ending the game earlier and it's like a decent ending to the first arc of the game's plot but maybe not for something that is a game unto itself how do we how do we make that a, a new ending that feels like climactic enough i guess mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh thankfully leviathan is here and all of his attacks fuck these guys up real good because they're all like aoe attacks yeah 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 Because a lot of the original members of the, the development team of the original game are working on this. It's the same scenario writer. It's just, a lot of the high-level people are the exact same people who worked in the original. Oh, also, when you kill one of the Whispers, Barret and Red just bust out their limit breaks. Yes. Yeah, it's like, if you're those same people that worked in that original game that has such a legacy, and it's been built up for fucking 15, 20 years, basically, like, ooh, we really want a remake of this that lives up to the, the, the hype and legacy of the original game that you could probably never meet again in those people's right, eyes. Yeah, yeah. Do you just do the same thing again, or do you just go like, fuck it, I want to do something new? Nothing personal. Whose particle effects are stronger? <laughs> the greatest question of all video games. <laughs> Did we beat him? Think so. Gotta punch fate with a dolphin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
With a remake that is playing with the, these ideas, and of a game that has so many, for, from the era it's in, naturally, so so many like rumors and and fake uh, lore about it. Yeah. What if they put that in? That's what I'm what thinking if, too. What if there is a way to to do this or avoid that? Yeah. Uh, when we get to later part. That's what I'm thinking too. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're seeing a lot of things as the future they're trying to protect, and you're trying to have the right to be your own author of. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They haven't finished building this level yet. <laughs> Look, there's some Unity Store assets right over there. Where are we? It's that scene from The Matrix where they're getting all the guns. It's rows and rows of Buster Swords. Ah, so it's a convention. I see. <laughs> I'm waiting, Cloud. <gasps> What the hell is this? This is... You defeated the particle effects, but are you ready for the lighting effects? Ah. It's too intense! Sephiroth. This is also the part that happens a lot of Final Fantasies, where it's like, there's some things where you're like, could that mean something? But most time it's just like, they just wanted to go hog fucking wild with the visuals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> President Shinra's kid, President Shinra, he's got his work cut out for him, I gotta say. <laughs> These pipes are not looking good. Uh, it's a good thing we're in like the Langoliers dimension, so it doesn't count. <laughs> Reeve just looks out and weeps. All the trains! Let's finish this. Fate is not to be taken lightly, Cloud. Shut up! <laughs> but he can just <laughs> anime style just deflect all of your your blows with his sword. I got Hell you. yeah! But yeah, it's Sephiroth, big time iconic anime swordsman, Sephiroth, and known illiterate Sephiroth. He is unable to read. That's why he's doing all of this, <laughs> taking his frustration out in the world. So yeah. Uh, he, his lesser resistances and immunities, uh, basically force you, if you want to do this fight successfully at the start, treat this as a one-on-one -on -one sword fight. You gotta parry, normal attacks, counter stance, stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is a new arrangement of, uh, also yes, Sephiroth there he is. in the There's original. The very long sword. <laughs> very long. <laughs> The song that is playing is a new arrangement of the song that is also incredibly well known, even if you've never played Final Fantasy VII, One Winged Angel. <laughs> For people who don't know, this is a e real easy way to put it. One Winged Angel and Sephiroth are to the oh, 90s wow. and early 2000s as Sans Undertale and Megalovania <laughs> is to now. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you stagger Sephiroth to get to juggle him around different platforms, it's cool. And they're both in Smash. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's intergenerational dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, Sephiroth can also juggle you around the, the battlefield, though. Have we forgotten already? Do you dream of me? 
Some of his moves he can parry. Teller Fury is the easiest one. Uh, if he uses a move called a Aeolian Onslaught, don't block that because it's an overhead that goes through your block. The Sephiroth story so far really, really does benefit from the unavoidable pop culture icon that is Sephiroth. Yeah. Because, like, if, if somebody came to this game from a vacuum, they, they lived in an underground bunker or whatever, this is their first video game. Mm -hmm. I mean, first, congratulations on making it this far. This, this seems very technical. Good for you. Yeah. But, but Sephiroth is the story of a guy you sometimes times have weird dreams of that pranked you and is now God. <laughs> yes. Come on. And even like, seriously, I don't know that much. Mm -hmm. But even the little I do know just from that, just cultural osmosis, that seems fair, actually. That seems okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the first phase of the fight, parrying or counterstancing Sephiroth like makes him makes him flinch. Uh, in this next it's phase, he just keeps attacking right through that shit. Boundless Void pins whatever character you're playing as, so he just fucking combos them in the air. Let's hustle. Let's do this. Deal with that. I'll take care of them. If he's attacking a different party member and you switch to a different character, he will like immediately do do like a nothing personnel kit and teleport behind the, the person you're playing as. <laughs> Let's do this. This for you. Right. <laughs> but I really appreciate that even Sephiroth can be staggered. You're mine. <laughs> well, yeah. Huh? Aerith gets to juggle him. <laughs> Look at these pretty anime boys go. <laughs> Look at them go. They're going so hard. And it's like, of course, in a multi-part thing, it's, it's like obligatory. Everyone knows Sephiroth. Everyone wants to have a big fucking cool fight with Sephiroth. So here he is, you know, even in the early parts of the, the game story. I'm not mad, though. It's a cool fucking fight. Don't overdo yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, even his pauldrons have pauldrons. He's the best soldier. <laughs> Now the actual one-winged angel kicks in. He has a ton of fucking moves. He does a Hell House style thing where he changes what element he's using, so his weakness also changes. That's the only way you can pressure him now is if you do a lot of damage uh, to him with whatever he's currently weak to. His name is in his theme song. What a chump. Yep. Does his little wrist flip as soon as they get to that part of the song. Like, that's me. <laughs> Fucking guy. Yep. So, the party we have here, the, the party you have when you fight Sephiroth changes, depending on certain conditions throughout the rest of the final boss fight. <laughs> so, every character have certain hidden conditions that they can do that adds extra points to them, and whoever gets the highest amount of points throughout the earlier fights gets to be in the party for the final, final fight. Keep it together. So, why, why are you disrespecting Tifa? What happened? I wanted Aerith and Barrett and Cloud because that's a party composition we have never had throughout this entire game so far. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. When I played this game my first time, it was Aerith and Tifa. And, and this fits for story reasons, too, because Barrett is like, th this dude's fucking with the planet, you say? All yeah. Right, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Barrett's probably the one easiest to convince. Mm -hmm. So you have, like, Cloud there for personal reasons. Yep. Uh, uh, Aerith for fate and uh, uh, Barrett for the planet. 
Tifa doesn't have the the same like connection to Sephiroth. Give him hell. Let's do this. Let's dance, asshole. Also, Sephiroth like one of the only bosses who can take a limit break and not die from it. <laughs> I just did like 12,000 damage to him and he's still fine. Don't overdo it. So it's my turn? Also having Barret for the final fight is a huge help because he's just such a massive pool of HP to heal other people with lifesaver. Right. <laughs> Excuse me, Cloud. I'm casting a spell. <laughs> Everybody shut up, I'm doing something. It's my turn, hey. I'll take care of them. It's your Genova turn. said it's my turn to have a cutscene attack. <laughs> Double time. My voice is turning into slow snagglepuss. <laughs> Heavens to Murgatroyd, Cloud. <laughs> I changed my mind. Actually, I have ice pow- I mean, lightning powers now. Exit stage right where my wing is. <laughs> so, uh, the wing on Sephiroth, not an actual character design element he had in the original game. The song was called One Wing Angel, but he was literally didn't have one wing. It wasn't until he came in as a secret boss fight in Kingdom Hearts, where Tetsuya Nomura gave him a, a single angel wing, that super fucking stuck and is in everything now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so it's not possible to stagger him anymore. Mm -hmm. He's got Shadow Flare, Heartless Angel, and the big fucking fireball in the sky now. Every certain amount of time passes, you'll see a countdown appear above Sephiroth's head, and if it reaches one, he uses Divine Proclamation, which is that Seth big fireball falling down, down on you and instantly killing you. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. So, yeah, you gotta kill him before that happens. Shadow Flare, you gotta block, it sucks you in, and if you don't block, it juggles you between the other Shadow Flares and ping pongs Ugh. you. Ugh. But, we still gotta summon, and I think the best guy to take care of Sephiroth is motherfucking Fat Chocobo. When Fat Chocobo lands, he looks at Sephiroth. He locks eyes with him, like target acquired. Look at this. <laughs> There he is. I'm <laughs> fucking him up. Who do I sit on? Point, and I'll sit on him. <laughs> the gameplay in this doesn't lend me to do- doesn't really have any way to do, like, Vapor Snake style shit in it, but... I will have a fat chicken sit on Sephiroth. Yeah, yeah. Look at him, he's, he's just trying to fill the space he's intimidating Sephiroth. <laughs> Trying to make him flinch. Okay, <laughs> I just love trying to time Fat Chocobo's arrival with the choir hitting really hard. Like, yeah. it's just so good. Take the lead. Here goes. This one's for you. Darkness falls. So, Heartless Angel, if he uses this attack, if you're in the AoE, it reduces your health to one. Oh, rude. So, if your whole party's in there, you could be super boned. This, this is an attack he also uses in, in his secret Kingdom Hearts boss fight, where it does the exact same thing. What if that's the twist? This is the Kingdom Hearts Sephiroth and not the Final Fantasy VII Sephiroth. <laughs> oh no. Please no. So it's my Dang, Barret. Yeah. I've never seen you jump so far. <laughs> Go on. Oh, that Chocobo better get the last hit. <laughs> oh, come on, Chocobo. <laughs> Chocobuddy. Sephiroth's pretty low on health. Yeah, but that's still like 
fifty thousand or whatever in that tiny sliver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can do it, Fat Choke as well. Sephiroth has been defeated. <laughs> <laughs> That, that was shame damage. <laughs> it's just too embarrassed. We can do this. We can. We can change it. Make it right. I'm not owned. A chicken never sat on me. <laughs> you can't prove it, Cloud. <laughs> no one's going to believe you. Not even Chadley. Yes, I know Chadley. We are acquainted. Anyway, I'm going to go visit my family. You know family, that thing I have and you don't. <laughs> Could you water my plants for me? My cat's already right there. Can you just give him his eye drop? For once in your useless life, Cloud. Careful now. That which lies ahead does not yet exist. Our world will become a part of it. One day. But I will not end. Nor will I have you end. This is... The Edge of Creation. <laughs> Cloud, lend me your strength. Let us defy destiny together. And then Master Hand comes out and fucks shit up. <laughs> yeah! This is just Final Destination. <laughs> yeah. Never. First time playing this, I was still mulling over everything that was happening in this final chapter, but at the same time, I was just like, Fuck, they're fighting! This is so good! Yeah! <laughs> Look at this! This is very good. It's so fucking cool. seconds till the end time enough for you perhaps but what will you do with it let's see I watch Galaxy Quest you can't fool me Mr. Vice President. Mr. President. Oh. <laughs> That's right. I just want him to, like, step over his dad's corpse. <laughs> it's like not giving a shit. Why you three look like presets in a character creator? <laughs> I'm the goblin one. <laughs> oh. 
Well, at least behind the big desk, we don't have to see his pants. <laughs> Get a mop! Get a mop! Oh man, you're gonna get so much combat data out of this. <laughs> gonna be swimming in the, data. The, the soldier just walking in the background like normal because Hojo does this every day. <laughs> At the same time, it's not related to any of the events that's happening. So, Stamp is a different dog breed now for some reason. What in the fuck? Because Cloud is different now. Oh, man. Stamp has always just Wait. been Cloud. Was that all of them? You just gotta change your materia slots. It's okay. Hey, Glow. Do you see that? Maybe, maybe get a cure one. They're they're just throwing those at you back in the city. Yeah, they're lousy with them. Bunch of Shinra soldiers outside the city attacking a guy. Mm -hmm. What's he got to do with anything? Yeah, this is this is the one w part I was don't. Was he working against Shinra in some way? Mm. This is the one part I don't like about the ending. Not because of what they're doing here, but just because this is a thing for a new person. The rest of the fate stuff is easy, pretty easy to understand what's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. This thing is just like if you haven't played the original, you don't know. <laughs> Cause he's got both pauldrons. He should be work. They should have the same boss. Yeah, that's how it works. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. <gasps> these are some strong dudes picking up these beams. Damn. Damn. Maybe Cloud's not special. <laughs> How much pressure there was and from what places to say you cannot sell a Final Fantasy 7 game where you cannot fight Sephiroth. Yeah. That's like illegal. Check this shit out. The first the first major change of defying fate here. Uh fucking Biggs! Biggs he's, is bad. He's alright. Wedge did fall seven thousand feet. Yeah. But Biggs, Biggs is he alive. just had gunshots. That's normal stuff. You can come back from gunshots. Biggs is super Coming. dead in the original game. Coming. Daddy? Molly! Sephiroth. As long as he's still out there, I... He'll come find you. <laughs> I thought you beat him.
We can. We will. Count me in. If it's to be a hunt, you could use a nose like mine. I'm in too! Bastard wants to destroy the whole planet, doesn't he? An enemy of hers is an enemy of Avalanche! Thinking about it, I guess rain is kind of a weird thing if you live under the plate, huh? Yeah. Or, I mean, just have you seen the the surrounding landscape? Yeah. It has not rained here, even on top of the plate, in ages. <laughs> almost there, Cloud. We're almost there. journey ah we have we they're implying i got my wish we've broken free of the shackles yep anything can happen now mm -hmm. you can find Mew under that truck <laughs> yep There are some people that don't like the the breaking free of the shackles of the original game's legacy essentially kind mm -hmm. of being based on the original Final Fantasy VII, but maybe it'll do its own thing in some way. But I will say, even with all that new stuff that happened, the way this ends with everyone setting out, you know, leaving Midgar, setting out to do something about Sephiroth, they're not sure what yet, all of that set up there is literally the exact same as the original mm -hmm. game still. Mm -hmm. Uh... They're, they're still the same people in the same general situation, so they react the same way. Yeah, in, in pretty similar ways. Uh, a lot of the backstory stuff that is hinted in this first remake is set up the same way as the backstory in the original game was. The, the big changes just being maybe they'll make different decisions when it comes down right. to it in, in big events. Uh, Biggs, at least, is alive going back to that scene where you see Biggs resting in bed, the camera looks at the table uh, next to him first. On top of his bandana being there, Jesse's gloves are also there. Whoa. So Jesse might be alive too, and who knows? Maybe Wedge survived somehow. I don't think Wedge survived. I, I don't think Wedge survived either. Um... He already got his big moment to impact the story after where he was meant to have died. Yeah. And, and then fell off the world's biggest building. Yeah. In the original game, Wedge also dies just from falling to his death. Uh, in in this game, when you, you first get to the big support pillar and there's an explosion that just sends Wedge flying off the side and he uses a grappling hook to save himself, he had no grappling hook in the original, so he just falls like 20 stories to his death, basically. So yeah, the other big changes, I guess just for spoiler reasons, for people who don't know about the original seven, I won't say exactly what's different, but the stuff they did, they did showing off Zack at the end, that's different than it was mm -hmm. in the original game. I'm curious what they're doing with that shit. So yeah, that's the end of the main story. There's no like after credits secret movies or anything. Yeah. Or anything yeah. like that. Um, 
but as we are recording this, we are four days away from the story DLC coming out. And on top of covering that stuff, uh, the, the PS5 version of the game that is coming out, uh, which seems to add at least one new thing to the main game, a new boss fight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Along with that boss fight, we'll also go through uh, the changes in New Game Plus mode, because like the combat mechanics are different, the boss fights have extra stuff in them, there's fights unique only to hard mode, so we'll, we'll go through that stuff, we'll see mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the alternate uh, side quest path. Betty! 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 Betty. Jules. Yeah! Chadley? Chadley? And Moggy. I love that Cloud Strife age 14 is played by somebody named Major Dodson. <laughs> Major Dodson is Stamp's owner. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll also see the alternate side quest path that can happen in the wall market section in Chapter 9, as well as seeing the other dresses that you can get. And then at some point, I guess we'll play the original game up to where this point ends, which is five or six hours of the original game. I think I'm not going to go hog wild with that one. I think I'll just stream it to you and we'll just record me playing it or something. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just a chill thing. Um... Yeah, it's just a weird... When I played this game the first time, I was just really unsure of how I felt about the ending. And then just, you know, over time, doing this Let's Play, because this is this is basically my third playthrough of the game. The second time was just for New Game Plus Hard Mode, so I skipped the cutscenes and didn't really think about the story much. But going <laughs> through this basically a second time with you, I'm... I like where it's going with this. It could be dumb. <laughs> I don't know if they fuck it up. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. with this first game, it, especially like when it comes to writing the characters, they seem to totally fucking get what people liked about the first one. And I don't think they're just suddenly going to forget how they were doing that for the first game and make it really dumb. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The, the first remake was good enough for me to have confidence that the, I'll probably like the next one or two or how many... <laughs> however many fucking games this takes god i hope right, it's, i right. hope it's not more than three <laughs> unless they go hog wild and then they're like you know what advent children gets a game now yeah why not why not but yeah i i'm i'm pretty cool with the 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 ending mainly because it when i was looking forward to the remake at first, it was just like, ooh, I can't wait to see all these great moments and, and things I really liked about the first game remade in, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. at this new level uh, of, like, AAA standard production. And then when I finished with it, uh, the things that interested me and excited me the most was all the new things they did. All, <laughs> all the new character writing, all the new different scenes and, and stuff like that. And having this ending like that makes me really interested what they're going to do now. So you, you just love uh, the, the whole train graveyard part. Can't get enough of going into the sewers a second time. Love that. Mm, okay. Not every new thing they do, but... <laughs> yeah, if there's any part of the game I wish I could change, uh, the m number one thing, I'd get rid of that cat. That cat mm -hmm. doesn't need to show up <laughs> there. Uh, but then the second, I, yeah, I wish the... You didn't go to the sewers a second time, like, as a full dungeon. You, like, you just go in there and to get to Don Corneo. That's it. I kind of want Wedge to meet that cat, though. Yeah. What would that be like? It, it'd be a very different interaction from him meeting Red, which, as we all know, I also want to see. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's messed up? One of the screens floating by right now has some footage of Cloud in front of his apartment. And in the recorded video of that cutscene, the texture in his door is correct. What the yes. fuck? Yes. You probably saw me tweet it, but some some copies of Intergrade uh, leaked out, which it doesn't have the DLC that that's not out yet. It's just the PS5 version of the original game, but it has been confirmed that door is fixed and it's hella high def. <laughs> Hell yeah. The high defest of doors. Yeah. Um, also, normally I would speed up the credits a little bit for games that have credits that last at 15 fucking minutes, but I like the music here too much. 
mm-hmm. I'm sure. And other you people... know, it's a nice reminder of all the places we've been. You know, yeah. Roche. Roche existed for a while. Oh yeah, God. Roche should have been at the motorcycle chase at the end. What a missed mm-hmm. fucking opportunity. I'm sure at some point it's just like you need to finish the game. So if you got to cut Roche, you got to cut Roche. But maybe Roche will show up in the next. Roche ain't dead. Yeah, he's not. There, there was an interview with like Tetsuya Nomura, someone else saying like we didn't expect people to like Roche that much, so he'll definitely be coming back. <laughs> also, yeah, look, yeah, Shinra yeah, middle yeah. manager. Mm-hmm. Now he is dead. He's definitely dead. Oh, uh, he's probably he, dead. He died when the plate fell. He probably died, which is a shame because I, out of all the like little NPCs that recurred several times, I think middle manager is my favorite. Both just for how entertaining he is, but also, like, his little role he played in the story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Never did get, like, a clear explanation about what's going up with going on with uh, uh, Tifa's cowboy memories. Yeah, that's... Yeah, if he could, like, go back and replay this or think about it, there are several things that are introduced that uh, are definitely there almost like sequel hooks now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all you get from from that is Tifa had a real bad day on Halloween one year, and uh, yeah, some some dead guy that she's mourning over, she picks up Sephiroth's sword. Yeah, there's a uh... it'll be interesting to see how the next game starts eventually because if it just picks right up, there's a big story seg- segment that totally makes sense to be recontextualized as a really good tutorial segment. <laughs> ah. uh, but also, one of the reasons why I think that maybe they pick this point as the ending point, aside from it just being kind of a decent logical ending point already, is um, there's a little bit of a, like... I've got some footage of it that pops up in the credits a little bit later, but... Midgar in the original Final Fantasy VII is a really good intro to RPGs to people who were new to RPGs at the time, which was just about everybody. Because yeah, 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 yeah. it's very linear, very kind of set piece based, roller coaster uh, based stuff. Um, the plot goes hard and fast, uh, and you barely get any new equipment or materia to manage, so you're just dealing with the battle system and maybe one new sword and a handful of materia throughout the whole thing. So it makes Mm -hmm. it really easy to learn the systems, and once you're out of Midgar, it fucking opens up and becomes more like a normal JRPG where there's tons more mechanics and and it's a lot more um, open, I guess? Like here, in the original game, all of Midgar has been six hours all pre-rendered backgrounds, it feels like it's going to be the whole game being in Midgar, and then you're put on the world map, and Midgar is this small area, and it's a singular dot on a world map with over, like, a dozen dots on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think that's something the remakes will be able to replicate, especially when there's, like, a big seam between Midgar and leaving Midgar. But damn, it was a cool ass feeling playing this as a kid and going like, guess what? That was just a little fraction of this whole world. Also, Mm -hmm. I really got to talk about an enemy I want to see in the next remake game. Right outside of Midgar, you can encounter a robot motorcycle that steers itself with its own incredibly long arms. (laughs) Its name is- And it has dog friends. And it has dog friends. This guy's name is Devil Ride. Yes. And he attacks you by drifting into you. I want this guy in the next game. Literally only one enemy, I think, from this part of the game was cut in the remake. So Devil Ride has got to make it in, right? You would think. I really hope Devil Ride is there. I really no, hope I'm, he's I'm an early been, enemy. I've been enjoying this this trip down memory lane. I mean, maybe less so right now, but <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, previous part. <laughs> yeah. I uh, like the... Uh, one thing they could have done, mm-hmm. presumably, uh, was make it so that it reflected your choices. Mm. And I know they didn't because uh, in Wall Market, there are dresses that your characters weren't wearing yep. in this playthrough. <laughs> yeah. Also, the stupid cat is in here. Wait a minute. Oh, man. Uh, 
funny thing. So this game's like 80 gigabytes in size or something like that. And sure. Something like 18 or almost 20% of this game's file size comes down to the final pre-rendered CG cutscenes from the final chapter because <laughs> there's not just one version of them. There's like four versions that all have different lip sync to the different voice acting languages they recorded. Mm -hmm. So the game's huge just because of these massive fucking video files, <laughs> which is also kind of in line with the original game, I guess. That game's on three discs, and everyone thinks the game's... Like, a, a bunch of people keep, kept thinking, like, oh, the first remake game is going to be the first disc, and then the second disc, and the, the third disc, so three games to do the whole thing, when that's not how file sizes work. The, like, the first yeah. two-thirds of the game is on the first disc. There are so many pre-rendered FMVs in the original game in the climactic last third that the second disc is 10 hours, and then the third final disc is just the final dungeon, some cutscenes before it, and, like, the world, so you can run around and do side quests. Like, it's not yeah. <laughs> evenly split at all. Um, but yeah, this is something I'm, I'm curious about, because this first game basically, like, you know, a whole bunch of new mechanics and polish and all that stuff, but it played like a Square Soft, Square Enix JRPG. It didn't pick up any, like, big game design things that are big, very frequently used in AAA stuff, especially RPGs. There's no randomized loots where you gotta fuse weapons together or, or trash them and all yeah, that, yeah. like, kind of time wasty shit. I'm curious if that will continue on for the next game, because suddenly, like, a AAA remake of this, they're not going to have Cloud be a tiny little guy on a world map, I would think. They're probably going to oh, try... Oh, it'd be so much fun, though. I, I have a dream that there would be fast travel you unlock, where, like, okay, sure, you're running around realistically scaled fields, that is the world map essentially but when you get fast travel you the camera just zooms out and you're really big on a smaller map so you can travel really fast <laughs> i want like a hybrid old and new world map basically yeah, yeah i yeah. do not know if that would work or look good but that would be really cool all you gotta do is put like a cyber filter over it and mm. Uh, it, it's just like Cloud putting on the Chadley goggles to, to <laughs> navigate a, a, an AR map to, to tell the fast oh, travel man. vehicle where he wants to go. That'd be great. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just curious if they're going to pick up, like, will the next game, because it has a big map you run around, will it be quote unquote open world or, or not? Mm -hmm. Because they stuck to their style of game design so hard with this, I'm thinking maybe not. I would actually probably prefer it that way i don't need all the a lot of open world fluff just put enemies on the map put some secrets to find let me run to the new towns and you know do the story and just drag and drop the car from final fantasy 15 <laughs> yeah <laughs> everybody loads in yeah um yeah the i'm also curious about like when to expect the next one, considering they knew the first one was going to sell really well, so, like, they were already in pre-production of this game before the first this first one released. Yeah, yeah. And they have such a massive base to build on with the battle system and all the character models and the mechanics being there already, and it's just adding on top of that. Like, I guess there's still an asshole to work to, like, you know, hey, the first game was just one town. There are multiple big towns in the original game that also had to be scaled up, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, how many of those big towns are... I mean, just look at the variety of environments in, in Midgar. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's still... It's still super crazy to play this and see the credits rolling on it, considering this game was announced so, so early to get people to buy PlayStation 4s yeah, that for yeah. a long time this game was just like this game is never coming out or it's going to get cancelled mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then no they were just being very quiet it just takes a long time to make big games turns out you're going to get one portion of Final Fantasy 7 for every PlayStation oh yeah oh <laughs> damn it I'm going to be 45 when this is done aren't I <laughs> And I'll still do be doing Let's Plays. 